Amen. Thank you, ladies. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this day. Amen. Amen. Stand with us as we sing. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you and to be back with you after having some time away, visiting family in Kentucky, also taking a little turn and headed to Nashville to the annual convention of Southern Baptist. And uh, we are so glad to be back with you here this morning, worshiping you with you on the Lord's Day. And um, if you're our guest today, and I've, and I've met several of you, thank you for being here today. We're just honored that you are here that you chose to worship with us at Aberdeen First Baptist today. If you want to, on the bulletin that you received when you came in, there is a little perforated tab on it that you can put your name and some contact information there if you would like us uh, to be in touch with you, to give you maybe some more information about the church, uh, give you some information about things that are going on. I promise we're not going to put you on an email blast that's going to like flood your inbox or anything like that. Uh, we'd just like to be able to send you a little bit more information if that's something you'd like to have. You can put that in one of the offering plates. That's by one of the exits. You can hand it to me afterwards, and we'd be happy uh, to receive that. Today, um, I'm not going to be bringing the message today because I have finally learned after 30 years of ministry, when you leave and go somewhere, go see family, go to a convention, you don't need to be at the same time trying to prepare a message for the next Sunday. I would have really shortchanged you this week if I had been trying to do that. Uh, so I've asked Jeff Hastings to fill the pulpit today and bring you the word. And he graciously accepted that invitation weeks ago. Uh, he brought a great word to the 830 service and he's going to bring it again today. Jeff and Chris are both right here and they have family with them today, their daughter and son-in-law. And uh, they joined our church this year. Uh, they're recent, but they are getting to know you quickly. Many of you have probably met them already. Uh, they've moved right here into Aberdeen, just down the road. And they also, uh, Jeff brings with him a lot of experience in ministry. He has been a pastor. 
He has been an Army chaplain because the Air Force wouldn't take him. Um, <laughs> he has, you get the last word today, brother, so that's all right. Uh, he, he has a, a ministry, a nonprofit ministry they've been doing for the last several years called Warrior 180. He'll talk about that, kind of what they do. Um, but we're just so delighted God has brought them to our community and to this church. What a blessing they are. And you're going to get to hear from him in just a moment. So it's great to be back with you. Uh, thank you for uh, sending me and Cindy, uh, Tom Cacadellis. You also sent him as a messenger. Um, I just saw... There they are. Yeah, they were there as well, weren't you? Hey, Paul's here, the bishops. And um, so I didn't know you guys were going to be here today, but welcome. Glad that you're back here. And uh, so we all had a great time there with 15,000 of our closest friends crammed into that, that hall uh, doing business together. So uh, probably many of you are wondering about the convention, and I have put a little something on my blog. You can go there and read it, just a few highlights. It's not everything that could be said, just some prayer points and some highlights. Uh, but next Sunday night in the evening, next Sunday night, because we have nothing this evening, but next Sunday night, for those of you that are interested, I will be doing a, a little bit of a debrief and report, and we'll have a prayer time for the things that we need to be praying about as Southern Baptists. So I invite you to come back at that time, and you can ask all the questions that you want to ask. Let's pray together, and uh, we'll continue the worship. Father, thank you so much for the time to come together and to worship you today and to be in this house that you've provided. And Father, to be here with our family of faith, but also to welcome those who are our guests today. And we're so glad for them and all of us as we worship together. Uh, Lord, most importantly, we want you to be glorified. We want Christ to be exalted. We want the hope of the gospel to be put before us because that is where our hope is. Father, we pray that you will be with us as we sing together these wonderful songs, Lord, that we sing them from our hearts as well as with our mouths, with our minds as well, Lord, as we confess the truths that are in them to you and to one another. As we pray and we know that you hear us, Lord, we give thanks. As your word goes forth and does its work, we give you thanks. And as we think about particularly today, the way in which this church has been so uniquely positioned by you, and the people that you're bringing and the direction that you're leading to help people who are hurting, to help people who are in places of, of struggle, who need the gospel, but they also need specific help with things they've experienced, things that they're going through. And we particularly are remembering our military families and those who serve and the things that they do and the problems they encounter. But Lord, you're doing a great work. Lord, help us to see that today as Jeff shares with us. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, again, to be together. May all that we do honor and glorify you. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading from t for today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. The inspired and errant and infallible word of God reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. Stand with us as we continue to sing. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. With holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing praise, this is unfailing love. 
that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. brings our chaos back into order, who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. All that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Amen.
suffering alone, dying he saved us, laid within a sinner's grave. Never he lives, risen to raise us, see how he loves us, Jesus, only Jesus, humble and holy, Lord, we adore you, Jesus, only there is none before you. We love you, worship you, and adore you. And wonderful and amazing is your name. It's in the holy and awesome name of Christ we pray. Amen. Be seated. Good morning. I truly consider it an honor and a blessing to be able to share with you this morning. I want you to know I do not take this at all lightly. It's a privilege also to be able to share from your home church, uh, to share with my family. And it's a blessing to have my family here, uh, my wife, Chris, and my daughter, our daughter, Kayla and our son-in-law Josh and um, I will choose not to say anything about the Air Force <laughs> just shows that the Army rises above all that <laughs> pettiness it is a blessing to be able to be here today thank you for the opportunity um, I want to ask you I am going to share from the very depths of my heart and soul this morning and I want to ask you if you would whatever is you know um, going on up here right now okay we're gonna where are we gonna eat where are we gonna have lunch and what are we gonna do today and oh yeah what I got whatever you forgot yes would you put that in the parking lot and would you listen with your heart and soul this morning? I believe that what we are going to talk about is such a great need and will require that of us today. And I believe that the Lord will bless us for that. So would you pray with me? Father, would you bless this time, I believe, Lord, at the beginning of creation, you knew we'd be sitting right here. And Lord, you already had this topic in this scripture in mind for us this day. You know the need that is out there and you know our hearts. So, Lord, wake us up. Speak to us. Open our hearts and minds. Lord, I, I step out of the way. I decrease that you might increase. Lord, let people see and hear you, not me. 
that you might receive the glory and the honor and praise. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, could you turn to Acts chapter 1, verse 8? And the great commission that Brandon read is part of the backdrop for what I believe God has not only commanded you and I, but is calling us to do. Acts 1.8, in, I'm reading from the NIV, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I think we would all agree this morning and say that we believe that God has commanded us to go out to a world who is lost. But the title of my sermon is, Do You See What I See? I think for some of you, I'm preaching the choir, you know. You've been there and you have walked there. But for the rest of us, We've never been there and we don't know. And so I hope today that our hearts and minds are opened and then we apply what God might be asking or calling us to do. Brandon said last week so eloquently, tragedy and suffering are a part of our existence. Would you agree with that? There is a community of people when it comes to tragedy. See, we're taught to run away from trouble, right? We teach our kids, when there's trouble, you run away. Uh, but there's a group of folks, our military, our veterans, and our first responders, when there's trouble, where do they run? They run to it. And when it comes to tragedy and suffering, these folks know it very well. They're the only people who are trained to literally run towards danger. And the freedoms that we enjoy today continue to be bought with a high price. I'm speaking of our military, our veterans, and our first responders and their family members. You see, I didn't know the needs I was a pastor for 22 years and then felt led to um, go in the area of hospital ministry and went back to school to be a hospital chaplain and work in trauma. That's why I first started connecting with first responders. And we moved to Kentucky and that's where I sensed at age 46, the leading to join the army. A lot of my friends said, Jeff, you're 46 year, years old, you're having a midlife crisis, don't join the army, buy a sports car. <laughs> I wasn't having a midlife crisis, I believe with all my heart it was God himself saying this is what I've prepared you in advance to do. They turned me down when I was 40 because I was too old, so how, of course, they turn you down when you're 46. I just called the army right away. You know, you went to the top. Sorry, Daryl. Um, and they said, we believe you have what we need. And so after basic training, Officer Basic and Chaplain Basic that they call Chabolic. I received a call from a battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel, and he said, we need you to come with us to Iraq and Kuwait. And I said, yes, sir. And that's where I began seeing the need, especially when we got home. I realized a bored soldier is a dangerous 
soldier. And it's where folks have too much time on their hands and begin to think and remember and trouble comes. Things like moral injury, trauma, PTSD. Things like changes in behavior, sleeping problems, depression, flashbacks, hypervigilance, marriage troubles, alcoholism, drug abuse, thoughts of suicide. Folks, the need right here is urgent. We've been traveling the country with Warrior 180 Foundation the last six years. The first year we traveled in a Toyota Prius. My wife doesn't like camping, so I figured it, God had us travel in the Prius, so she would like the idea of traveling in an RV. And we parked the RV, the closest place we could find, in Carthage. And it was just a few steps away from us, our second day there, that God brought the first need and blessed us with a good friend. You see, it's right here. We just have to open our eyes. God said, Jesus said, these are his words, you will receive power. Deutimus, dynamite. You will receive such power to do things that you can't do, only he can do when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Fort Bragg's right over here, the largest army base. Over 50,000 soldiers, 13,000 reservists, 14,000 civilian employees, 6,000 contractors, 70,000 family members and 121,000 army retirees and family members, almost 280,000 folks. Now, not everybody who has served in the military or as a first responder has these troubles, but a large majority of folks do. North Carolina, in 2019, 250 veterans took their own lives. You might ask, what is this? Statistically, they say that 22 veterans a day die by suicide. Over one year, that's 8,030. There's 8,030 buttons in here. We used to use pennies, but Jeff got tired of carrying this with pennies. Buttons are a little lighter. Okay, I was Army. The buttons, I think, are better because every button is different. That's 8,030 buttons. That's 8,030 lives, 8,030 families and communities who are left asking, why? Who are traumatized. And we try to get in and find those folks and help them because usually when it comes to this topic, most of us are like this. Oh, there's so-and-so whose son, I don't know what to say, everybody says, right? What do you say? You don't have to say a word. You just be there, hold their hand, hug them. I spoke to somebody after the first service. She said, I don't know what to do. I said, if you have an idea, don't ask them, just do it. If God brings it to your heart, just go do it. You mean food and, and cleaning their house and, and whatever God lays on your heart. What about mowing their lawn? They can't think straight. They're walking wounded. And they need the love that Chris and I have experienced in such a short time in this place to touch their lives like you have touched our lives. 
North Carolina. There are over 8,500 veterans in Moore County. Suicide isn't just with military and veterans. Do you know that the second leading cause of death in North Carolina from 15 to 34 year olds is suicide? The second leading cause of death, 15 year olds. Folks, the, they should be struggling about what color shoes am I wearing today? Am I gonna play baseball or soccer? Not this kind of stuff, this is real. In North Carolina, the third leading cause of death for 10 to 14 year olds is suicide. Something must be done. We cannot just sit here and do nothing. It was in 2015 that God started laying this on my heart for us to sell our house and travel from community to community to bring awareness to what's happening and to wake people up and to write a program to teach people how to keep people safe. I have asked him, I've cried out to him, and I have begged him, take it away from me. I don't want it anymore. It stays right there. We, we, must do something. We have a God who heals the broken hearted. You know him. He heals the broken hearted. In 2012, I was diagnosed with PTSD. I went to the VA and they said, now you will have PTSD the rest of your life. <laughs> right? We serve Jehovah Rapha, the Hebrew name for the God who heals. Not only this, but in here and in here. Some of you grew up and experienced things as a child. You know what I'm talking about, and God has healed you of those. He is in the process of healing us. We serve an awesome God. That's what these folks, that's what I needed. When my wife said, you're different. I mean, once you get to know me, you'll realize I am different. But she's talking about, I am not the same person who came home. Our son is not the same person after a tour in Iraq and a tour in Afghanistan. I read a story online about James and Holly Webb. They live, are from Whispering Pines. James served at Fort Bragg multiple tours, came home struggling and hurting and not knowing what to do and reaching out for help and the story right online says they couldn't find anyone to help. They could not find anyone to help. James took his life in 2017. It is time that kind of stuff stops, that people see in this body a group of believers who so love God, who aren't perfect, right? Who aren't perfect, who still have struggles, and we'll even admit that, but who so love God and are in the process of being transformed by him that take that love out into this community to make a difference. My prayer is that someday we either build right here or whatever, but we have another facility that we allow veterans and, and, and military first responders and their families to come to for healing and compassion and love and help and hope. 
I've seen the place in here that we can take them for a weekend and see God do incredible things. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Luke 5, chapter 17 through 20. That was all preliminary. We're just getting to the good stuff. Luke 5, 17 to 20. This is really for me the picture of what it looks like or what it can look like when you and I believe what Jesus told us and are sold out to it and allow him to use us. One day, verse, starting at verse 17, one day he was teaching Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there and the power of the Lord was upon him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to make him, excuse me, tried to take him into the house and lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up to the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. You see, this is a group of folks that I call stretcher bearers. That I believe you and I need to be, I'm asking you to be. You see, I believe you already are gifted to do this. You are ready, have the talent to do this. You already have the knowledge to do this. You already are equipped to do this. You already have resources to do this. We just need to come together and be sold out. You see, these folks are already coming, some of them to this facility and sitting and talking to your pastors. You are so blessed to have these guys and their families here. They understand. Stretcher bearers, it doesn't tell us, it just says a group of men. You see, most men, happy Father's Day, we would say, well, take him to the doctor. He's a paralytic, he's paralyzed. But I believe these men were sold out for Jesus. They said, well, We've heard about this Jesus, and we've seen what he can do. That's where you need to go. Let's go. Will you go? Will you go? Will you go? Okay, there's four of us. Let's go. Put him on a stretcher. They get to the house. Hey, this Jesus is a big deal. They couldn't even hear him or see him. Oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry, Billy Bob. Too bad. That's what most of us would have done. But being a stretcher bearer, they were willing to persevere. I'm not giving up. I'm not going anywhere. I cannot tell you how many times I have said those exact words to folks that God laid that on my heart who needed to hear, I'm committed to seeing you get the help you need. You see, they couldn't even see or hear Jesus, but they knew the power that he had to help this man. And they thought he needed his body healed. Jesus knew what he really needed. His sins forgiven. They were determined. Chris and I were sitting in the airport in Dallas, Texas, flying to go speak at an event. I'm watching and this guy comes walking right at me and he has a sweatshirt that says, South Dakota. 
Now, most people in this room, he would have just walked by, right? I was born and raised in South Dakota. So I said, hey, South Dakota. I could tell immediately something was wrong. And I, I knew he was military. By the way, how many, how many military and veterans do we have in the room? I'd like you to raise your hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I knew something was wrong. My wife said, when is the last time you, you ate? He said, a couple of days ago. Why don't you guys go get something to eat? That was her saying, Jeff, talk to the guy. I'll pray. Soon I found out that he had lost several buddies on his tour, but also lost several to suicide at that same time. And he and eight other guys had made a pact that on this day at this time, they were all going to join their buddies, take their lives. And I said, Brandon, that's not going to happen. God provided the time for us to be able to sit with him and listen. And say, Brandon, do you believe that God Almighty created the heavens and the earth and, and, and at the same time created a plan to save you and your friends? Brandon now is stationed in California and is doing the same thing for his buddies, guys and gals who are in need. He called us one time and said, told us the story, and he said, am I doing the right thing? I said, are they still there? Yeah, you're doing the right thing. His wife and mother sent him a text as he boarded the plane that said, tell Jeff and Chris, thank you for saving your life. It wasn't Jeff and Chris. It was Jesus. Who else would have said anything? South Dakota. You see, I believe that God has put Chris and I at that place at that time for a specific reason, just like you and I here today. There's no coincidence. Only what, Chris? God incidents. They were willing to persevere. They were willing to be part of the solution. First John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. First John 3, 16 to 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions, and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him. How can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. It's time. It's time. The need is so great. We bought a house on 3rd Street. The neighbor on this side is 20 years army. The neighbor next to him, he's still in. He's a nurse practitioner. This guy is a master sergeant. He's still in. Um, the only people we don't know about is a house that is being built on the other side of us. Where's the police department, fire department in Aberdeen? How far away? Two block? You think that's a coincidence? Chris and I went out to eat one night at a pizza place. We'd never been there. And when we got in, there's like 20 firemen sitting there from Aberdeen. No, from uh, Southern Pines. And we told the wait waitress, we've got, their, we've got their meal. We'll take care of that. And then I went up to each one of them 
we are given stars from, from American flags. The stars are removed. We have groups of folks, and maybe we'll do that here. We call them star parties. The rest of the flag is retired respectfully. Put it in a little Ziploc bag like this. On the back, it says, I'm part of an American flag who, like you, serve the USA. I can no longer fly. The sun and the winds have caused me to become tattered and torn, much like you and your service. Please carry me as a reminder that you are not forgotten. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for it is by God's grace you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift so that no one can boast. And we hand these out to military veterans, first responders. I always have these in my pocket and in our cars, in our home. And we send bags of these out to folks who want to do the same and use this as a way to start a conversation. And you have to give them to somebody correctly, right, Brandon? And I did that to every one of those firemen. One of the firemen said, we're hurting, man. It's time. It's time we stop letting people walk alone. It's time that you and I come together and it's time we share the love of G Jesus Christ. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but in actions and truth. At the end of 2016, our son called and said, Hi, Dad. You know when your child calls and the first word, you know something's wrong? I said, hey, Logan, what's up? I've lost another buddy, Dad. I can't take it. A piece of me goes away every time that happens. Dad, we have to wake up our country to what's happening with our military and our veterans. I said, Logan, you're, you sound like you want to do something. He said, yeah, Dad, I do. You and I are going to kayak the entire length of the Mississippi River. And I said, I've never kayaked, have you? He said, no, but I've been watching it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I know what kind of kayaks we need. He's From his explosions, uh, he's got a, a pretty bad back. So uh, we need sit on top kind, Dad. I said, yeah, yeah. Actually, when he called, I was, I was in the hospital. Yeah. So we started then making plans on May 1st, 2017. We left Itasca, Minnesota. Now, the Mississippi River is gracious. You know, it's about this wide there and about this deep. And a lot of, the, a lot of you learn to turn. And we didn't have rudders in the back of our kayaks at that point. So we had to do it like this to make a turn. Now, if I've only kayaked once for 85 days, 2,347 miles, and we hit the ocean. We met a lot of great people along the way. You know, sometimes you watch the news and you think, man, what's happened to our country? But everyone we met told us about their love for God and their love for folks who have served this country. It's time. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am convinced that God has placed Pastor Darrell and Pastor Brandon here to help lead and equip us to go out there and see God do some things far greater than you and I can ask or even imagine. It's time. 
Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? I cannot let it continue to happen. I cannot let it continue to happen. There are ways and there are things we can do to equip you to help your friends and family and veterans and military and first responders who are hurting and suffering. And I said, here am I, send me. I believe with all my heart that these gentlemen are committed to help the men and women who are suffering and hurting. Will you join us? Would you pray with me? Lord, I have begged you to take this away. But you knew that COVID would be coming that would force us to make decisions that ultimately led us to Aberdeen, North Carolina. You know the suffering and hurting, and you came to heal the brokenhearted. Raise, raise up people here today. Raise up people who are listening. Raise up people who have no idea or thought of what to do. Bind us together that these lives will be transformed for eternity, for your glory. Bring more stretcher bearers. In Jesus' name. Amen. First of all, would you like to show your appreciation to Jeff? Please. Thank you, brother. One thing that uh, Jeff, I don't believe you mentioned it, is the means by which God brought you all here was you are now employed as a chaplain at St. Joseph of the Pines here locally. So if you have a loved one or a friend or know somebody who is there, they got a friend. So uh, be sure and let them know about, about Jeff and his ministry there. I just want to say this before we sing together and close our service and have our time of response. Just to back up a little bit, even before the Hastings got here, back up to where uh, your search committee was, was talking to me before we even knew we were coming here. We had long discussions with the search committee that did such a wonderful job, had such great times in, in just praying and talking together about where Aberdeen as a church was and the community. And one of the things that, that came up in those conversations was we know our community is transitioning it's changing right before our eyes and has been for some time and continues to do so because of the military presence because the families are more and more just kind of coming this way and relocating our area and we know that our future looking forward we have to do something we have to figure out how that we connect better uh, with these families and how we learn how to maybe meet spe you know special particular needs that those families have serving in the way that they do now first responders weren't on our on our radar but now you've put it there too <laughs> and that's great um and so they were like we, we really know that our future holds that we need to do something and they said do you know what we could do and i said no i don't <laughs> and i said but i said we can begin to pray and we begin begin to be intentional and we began to do those things and we have been praying and we've been seeing God answer prayers. God has been answering them in the sense of bringing people. The first person God brought us was Brandon. And, you know, he brings that experience. 
Um, he's legit. He's Air Force too, by the way. And but he's like he's like real. I, I'm just pretending. But he's like he's like uh, he's real. And um, and but immediately we we saw you know what he brought and. And again, every week there is somebody or more than one pre person in his office. Every week he's counseling them. He's talking to them about the gospel, working through some of these kinds of things. Um, God is bringing us other people. Uh, you've got to hear from, from Jeff and, and Chris about their ministry. And there are others that God is even doing right now. So what is God doing? I don't know. Uh, many of you all, though, because I've heard you talk about that, that wonderful uh, very foundational, very impactful study that some of you have done experiencing God. And you remember, you know, what you're doing is being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and seeing what God is doing and then join him where he's working. Well, I'm telling you folks that everything, this is where God is working, at least one of the places God's working, because God is the one that's moving the pieces and bringing people that can help. You, you may say, well, I, I really don't know much about this at all, but I'd like to help. Well, God's bringing you the people who can train you. <laughs> who can teach you all about that with what God's already put into them. So this is very exciting. Also, I want to remind us all of our, of our mission statement. Do you remember the mission statement? Who can say the, I didn't do this in 830 because, you know, that 830 crowd. But I believe that this crowd, there's somebody here who can say the mission statement without looking at your bulletin. Who can say it? It's so simple. You got it? That's pretty good. I knew a pastor could do it um, with some help. Uh, yeah, connecting people. It's about people to the hope. See, that's the gospel, the hope, the hope of Jesus. Because what Jeff talked about today is, is a lack of hope. When people just completely lose hope, have no hope, cannot see a future, and struggle with these kinds of things. And you don't have to be in the military or a first responder to get there. It's everywhere. It's just worse in those career fields. But connecting people to the hope of Jesus in Aberdeen, where we are and beyond. Very simple. I hope all of you will memorize that. And if you pick up a copy of our strategic plan that we developed back in 2019, and you can pick up copies of it. We have 10 core values to guide our ministry. And we put in there military ministry. Our military is something we know we need to value. Now, there's nine other ones, too. So pay attention to those. But very intentionally put, we value our military because that's who's here. So many. Not completely, but so many. And we know we need to be aware of that. So, so continue to pray. And as you hear things beginning to be available and, and things that are going to be happening, God's going to be doing, uh, get involved. Get involved. And I know you'll be blessed in doing so. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Uh, Mackie. And welcome back, Mackie. Glad you're here. And thank you, Brandon, for last week and filling in so well as you always do. And we're going to sing a song of, of response and prayer. Pastor Brandon will be here. I'll be over here. And we'd be happy to pray with you. If you want to come and, and with somebody and just come here and pray at these steps, that's fine. If you come want to share decisions, whatever you'd like to do, this is the time uh, to do that as we respond to what we've heard from God today.
remind you that we close the service here just in a moment, but never the invitation. So if you need us at any time about anything, if you want to pray together, talk together, counsel together at all, you call, you text me, you email me, whatever you need to do uh, during the week, and, and we'll just make that work. If you are a guest today, thank you for being here. We're so glad that you came our way. We're honored that you're here. If you have time on this Father's Day, uh, just for a few moments, uh, Cindy and I would love to greet you if we haven't had the chance to do that personally yet. And all you need to do is go through this door over here, right across the hall, big sign there says Welcome Center. We'd love to greet you there just for a few moments, give you a gift by just a way of saying thank you uh, for joining us today. And, um, and then we'll be on our way. So again, uh, we've said it several times, but again, Happy Father's Day uh, to all of our fathers. We give thanks to God for, for godly fathers. And I hope you have a wonderful time with your family today. So just a few things before we go. Uh, there are no evening activities today for Father's Day. Enjoy the time with your family. Also, we're getting ready for VBS to start in the morning. Uh, so thank you to those of you who are working VBS and volunteering. Uh, be praying for our VBS this week. Uh, we want to make a great impact on these children that God will entrust to us as we teach them the gospel. Also, with the connections that we'll make with families so please be in prayer for that especially if you're not working just remember us in prayer as those who are working are doing that next week if you're newer to the church or maybe you're brand new maybe this is your first Sunday but you'd like to learn more next Sunday I'll be doing our next discover Aberdeen class I, I lead that class we do it during the Sunday school hour right here in the welcome center from 9 45 to 10 45 it's a great place to learn about 
uh, what our church is about, what it means, uh, our denomination, our cooperation for missions, um, our strategic vision. You can ask all kinds of questions about the church, and uh, it's a good time to be there. Just uh, let us know if you're coming. We'd love for you to be there. Also, Saturday, uh, our military golf salute, golf outing is, is here. So it'll be this Saturday, and a lot of uh, preparation's gone into this, and I appreciate the teams led by Cindy who've been doing all of this, and a lot of people did things this week while we were gone to get things ready. Um, but we tee off at 945. Registration will begin at 845, so get there early so we can get everything sorted out, and we'll get, get our teams together, and we'll enjoy that. But this is a first for us. Uh, it is an appreciation for our military family, so we're, we're, we're kind of sponsoring them to come and play and have a time of fellowship and get to know each other better. So please be in prayer for that as well. Um, and Tuesday, thank you, Tuesday is the last day for you to get signed up online because uh, we have to give them a number on Wednesday. So if you still want to do that, you have to Tuesday uh, to get that done. And also, just one other thing in the bulletin there, beginning this week on Wednesday morning, if you're an early riser, 6.30 a.m., uh, here at the church is going to be uh, beginning a Wednesday morning prayer uh, time for anyone who is interested, who likes to get up early. Uh, we'd love to have you there uh, for a time of prayer. So glad you're here today. So let's uh, do our benediction together here at Aberdeen. We close with the scripture as a benediction, and, and we read this together. This comes from Ephesians chapter 3. Read along with me. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You're dismissed.